Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to talk about multiple choice grammar in the writing section of the SAT. First, our legal disclaimer, test names are the registered trademarks of the respective owners. Said owners are not affiliated with Educator.com. The College Board was not involved in the production of and does not endorse this course. This lesson's about the multiple, po multiple choice portion of the writing section. We're going to start off by talking about some strategies that are going to be useful for all the questions you'll see. And then we're going to explore each of the three question types with a couple of tips for approaching each of the different question types in the writing section, multiple choice. Remember, the writing section is broken into two parts, the multiple choice grammar and the essay. We already covered the essay in the last lesson. Now we're going to start talking about the multiple choice portion, which is all about grammar. So since everything's about grammar, an important part about doing well on the multiple choice section is knowing your grammar, having a sense of how grammar mistakes happen in English, what are some of the most common ones that you'll see on the SAT. So make sure you check out the next lesson, Grammar Mistake Petting Zoo. So even if you have a really great grasp of the English language, you've been reading for so many years, and you've got this huge understanding of how to use English and a huge vocabulary, you still might want to check out the Grammar Mistake Petting Zoo just because it's going to give you a sense of what things are the most likely ones, what you should be be keeping an eye out for especially, which will let you go faster. And if you aren't so great with uh, you know, English grammar, you'll definitely want to check out the Grammar Mistake Petting Zoo still because it will give you an introductory lesson to what things you need to start paying attention to, what you want to be paying attention to and looking for in the sentences. And if you want any more help with this, go check out the SAT writing specific lessons where we'll explore more of the kind of grammar mistakes that you'll see and talk about them in depth so you'll be able to understand them, why they're mistakes, and how to fix them, and what's going on in a more in-depth manner. The writing section is about formal written English. The correct answers are based on proper grammar and using the language correctly. I put proper in quotes because in many ways the language that you or I speak, if we're being understood by someone else speaking English, in some ways we can consider that proper English, but it's not proper standard written English, what's been agreed upon for a couple hundred years now. So there's some formations that are acceptable in spoken English, or at least we understand what they mean but are not acceptable in written English. I'm sure you're used to this. So what this means for you is you have to avoid colloquialisms, things that are everyday expressions but we might not, not think look so good when we see it written out. So it's never going to be as obvious as seeing LOL on the test. You're never going to see LOL written on the test and it's your job to replace it with someone was laughing but you are going to see stuff where it's going to be something that is a really common phrase that sounds normal when people speak it, but it's not technically a correct phrase in formal written English. So just because you, he just because you read something that you're used to hearing doesn't automatically mean it's correct, so keep that in mind when you're working on this. You also want to beware of rising difficulty. Since the test is on formal English, you want to be careful about how the difficulty is going to increase. Remember, in each of the subsections, the difficulty will increase as you go. So you've got this sort of sawtooth curve where it drops down at the end of each subsection. And, you know, well, the final one is actually more mixed up. But you're going to see the sawtooth curve of getting harder, getting harder, getting harder, switch to a new subsection, getting, you know, goes back to easy. Getting harder, getting harder, getting harder, switch to a new subsection, switches again. So in each subsection, the earlier questions are going to be exactly that. They're going to be easy, early questions. So when you progress in the subsection, things are going to change. As you get farther into the subsection, the errors are going to be harder. Because what does it mean for something to be hard on the SAT? It's that most people aren't able to get it. They know how, pe how well people do, and so they're able to figure out what is difficult based on how well people do on it. So, as you get farther in a subsection, you want to start paying attention to these errors in a more analytical way. As you see easy questions, you're probably going to be able to just go, oh, that's a mistake, and fix it and move on. So it'll be fast movement through the easy questions. But in the later ones, just because you see a phrase that sounds unusual or something kind of weird isn't automatically going to say to you that it's incorrect. Because formal English, we're not really used to formal English on a day-to-day -day basis unless you've been reading perhaps a lot of Victorian literature or something. So just because you see something that sounds a little odd to your ear doesn't automatically mean it's incorrect. What that means is when you're working on the hard questions, it's up to you to analyze the grammar. You have to pay attention and figure about it, figure it out in a logical manner. Identify the mistake instead of just relying on instinct. It's going to be a little bit harder to just do it by feel 
when you're working on the later questions because they're going to be designed to be tricky, to be able to catch you in ways that you aren't expecting. So at that point, you really have to pay attention and think about what you're doing. On the earlier ones, you can just sort of move through them and get, go by instinct. But in the later ones, it's up to you to pay attention and do it analytically and logically. You have to think carefully about what you're doing on the later ones because there'll be more complicated questions and grammar.